Alright guys, this is John, and this is Art Quest Episode 5. And in this episode, I wanted to talk about a subject that kind of irks me. As you can see, I have a firearm on the screen here. This is a Bushmaster AR-15. And I kind of want to talk about firearm design. Because I feel like I see a lot of pieces of art, and even in AAA professional games, where... A firearm just doesn't make sense to me. And I mentioned in episode uh, 1.5 when I was ranting about being banned from Discord, which I have set Discord back up. So if you join Subscribestar, you will be back on uh, a Discord server where we can chat about art and stuff like that. Hopefully I don't get banned again. I was really annoyed by that though. Anyways, I was talking about how I'm a firearm owner. And... Um, I haven't been a firearm owner for a super long time. I think I bought my my first firearm I bought in 2016, and it was a Remington 870 shotgun. And since then, I've built two AR-15s from 80% lower receivers, meaning uh, I took a low receiver, which is just this part here without the magazine, not the pistol grip. It was like a stripped lower. Well, beyond a stripped lower, I had to finish milling out the last 20% of the lower receiver in order to finish the gun and then you know you build all the part all these little interior parts you put together in the gun and so that was my first ever AR-15 which I did a number of years ago after that I purchased my shotgun and I built a second rifle after that um, I've had handguns all kinds of stuff like that so part of why I wanted to build my own firearm was because I wanted to know how exactly does this thing work because if I knew how it worked, I'd be able to better maintain it, take care of it, and hopefully be more proficient with it. God forbid if the scenario ever arose where I needed to protect myself, my wife, or my daughter with it. So all this to say, uh, I have probably more than a layman's understanding of firearms and how they work. And I see a lot of designs in games, movies, um, and just concept art, uh, published RPGs. I see a lot of stuff like that that just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. And it just comes down to simply like the artist that's designing it is going for what looks cool and what not necessarily will actually work. And I don't want to say that like your designs should cater to like some gun nerd who actually understands how firearms work, but I think that understanding how firearms work will help you in making better firearm designs. So that's why I have this image up here, and I kind of wanted to talk about how these things work and how you can know how these kinds of things work and hopefully design better firearms. And like I am guilty of making bad firearm designs that make no sense in the past. I've done it before. It's very common. Um, and this was even after owning guns for a while, I still like would make errors and I was, it was because I was going for visual does that look cool as opposed to does that does that make sense and I think things can still look cool and still make sense and I think when they make sense they actually look cooler because there's like a, a there's actual like design behind it so right yeah right here we're looking at an AR-15 and this is still relatively the same uh, as an M4 or an M16 or anything like that as far as functionality, how how the bolt reciprocates and uh, fires around, extracts the casing, and loads another round. And you can see it here. As the bolt goes back right here, this, this object here that's going back and forth is called the bolt in an AR-15. Inside of there, there is a hammer, and that's what this little hammer, or there's a firing pin, I'm sorry, and that's what this hammer is hitting. Uh, internally in the in the bolt carrier group is what it's called. It fires it, the explosion shoots uh, the, well, the little mini explosion in the chamber sends gases up, up here and there's a gas tube that connects somewhere probably around here and it goes back into here and there's a little like gas port on the top of the, the bolt carrier group which is what is sending the bolt back. Sending the bolt back resets the trigger when the trigger is reset, uh, you're able to fire again. But also, it extracts the round as it goes back, shoots it out, 
as it goes back, the spring in the magazine pushes another uh, bullet up into the feed lips of the the magazine. And when the bolt goes back forward, it pushes the new round into the chamber, and it's loaded. You're ready to the, the trigger's reset. There's a new fresh bullet in the chamber. You're ready to pull the trigger and fire. Basically, that's how it works. And then this is inside the stock here. There's a little spring here, which uh, provides some tension and helps push the bolt back forward after it uh, shoots it back. So, I mean, you look at it, and it, when, when I was building my AR, I was surprised at how much of the AR-15 is uh, made from springs, little tiny detents, and, like, just mechanical. It's It's very, like mechanical that there's no electronics there's no need for it you're using the bullet uh firing here to send the bolt back and and a spring to shoot it back forward load a new round extract the casing extracting the brass and resetting the trigger like everything is purely mechanical in an ar-15 and it works uh that's why this design hasn't changed since the 60s um uh, Eugene Stoner designed the AR-15 back in the 60s, uh, and I, I mean, there's it's still the modern service rifle for a lot of a lot of the world because it works. It's a good, it's a relatively good design. I want to look at one other thing here. This is a AK-47. You can see an AK-47 is very similar. I'm not gonna sit dwell too long on this because I don't know much about AKs. I'm not an AK guy. Being that I live in California, the regulations revolving firearms is ridiculous. And owning like a actual quality AK, an, an AK as it should be, um, to me just isn't worth it. And I don't feel like desecrating an, uh, an AK-47 to make it California compliant. So if I ever leave this state, I'll probably buy an AK just to have one. But I just feel like in California, it's not worth it here. It's a lot easier to to make a an AR-15 compliant because it's much more modular and it's a much like newer platform than the AK-47 is or the AKM. So as you can see here, it's it's a very similar concept though. Fires, there is a gas port which uh, shoots the bolt back, the bolt carrier group back, resets the trigger, extracts the round, and pushes a new cartridge into the chamber. It's the same concept, it's just mechanically slightly different. And that's that's why when you look at like an AK, it looks the way it looks. That's why when you look at like an AR, that's why it looks the way it looks. So I wanted to kind of look at some gun concepts that I feel they look great from an aesthetic point of view, but they may not be functional <laughs> like if someone made this gun in real life and put it in front of me i'd be like what is this yeah this looks neat but when it comes to firearms practicality is king in my opinion at least that's how it is in real life if you're designing something so fantastical you can probably get away with a little more ridiculousness a little more a little more bulk because you have to understand like a firearm is meant to be carried especially if this is like for military con uh, context, you know, you're going to have soldiers carrying this, you're going to have people carrying this around, and you don't want it to be this big bulky thing. Um, generally, like a, a soldier or an individual is going to be carrying ammo on them, so how are you going to carry uh, spare magazines, all these sorts of things? So you want to keep all those things in mind. I mean, that's what real gun designers are keeping in mind when they're designing their guns, is because most of them are going for military contracts, so how do we make this lightweight, functional, practical, and so that a soldier can carry as much ammo as they need to carry on their person so that they never they don't have the issue of running out or whatever. So you want that that's what they're thinking about. And I feel like oftentimes in the context of us being designers, we're not, thinking about those things we're thinking about like ah what's the shape language it needs to convey aggress aggression or uh, this one's a sniper so it needs to be like y you know what i mean we're not thinking in the same mentality and i think that if we did have a bit of the practicality that we need or that uh real gun designers have who are designing actual firearms for 
for use in the world. Our gun designs for games and RPGs and all that kind of stuff will be better. So here's some gun designs. Let's see here. I just Google searched some stuff. So this is from Doom. And while this looks really cool, I just want to point out it's big, it's bulky. But in the world of Doom at the same time, like it doesn't necessarily matter. The character in Doom is like a super soldier. He's got a cool suit on. It fits within the world. But if this was for something a little more grounded, this would probably not work. Um, I, I don't... I've never played Doom, the new one. I've been meaning to, but I haven't gotten around to it. But what does this thing shoot? Like, I don't know what this thing shoots. As a person who understands firearm, it looks like some kind of probably like plasma weapon. So where where is the energy because this thing is going to run out it just doesn't have infinite ammo does it where does where do you recharge this thing where is like a battery or cell or or some kind of power source inserted into this for a reload uh it needs to be practical as far as reloads are concerned also i don't like the idea of no trigger guard here there's a reason why guns have trigger guards and that's to prevent what's called negligent discharges where the gun is going off because it snags on a piece of clothing um, or maybe it when you're wearing your full kit so the doom guy's battle armor and stuff like that he's carrying his gun the trigger could snag on a pouch his armor something like that and negligently go off into his foot into uh, an ally all those sorts of things so just having a little if we look at the AR here See, this is why the AR has the little uh, trigger guard underneath here. It just is adds a little little extra element of safety. So there's that with this design. Altogether, though, I think this one looks pretty cool. I think the stock is a little odd. I don't understand the stock here, how that gets pocketed in your shoulder. Um, but this isn't the most egregious sort of gun design I've ever seen. It looks cool, so it has that going for it, and that really helps to look, sort of hide these slight imperfections like, well gee, you're just gonna you're gonna blast your wiener off with this probably by accident as it's you know, you're carrying it or hanging it with a with a strap maybe from your person. Um, you're gonna have a bad time with that. I guarantee that th this is a, just that adding the little trigger guard there is a safety feature that you're gonna want. Uh, these are from Traveler Rich. I didn't make these, but um, they are made uh, for the RPG Traveler, I believe. And I don't know who made these. I don't know where they they come from. And I'm not gonna sit here and like. I'll, I don't want to talk bad about other artists or anything like that. Most of these look pretty, relatively okay. I've noticed a theme with sci-fi firearms that there is a big thing of like we'll just put thumb holes on everything everything needs a thumb hole and I let's see like the like these here like oh everything thumb hole like thumb hole thumb hole thumb hole like for some reason thumb hole everything is just thumb hole if you put a thumb hole on something then you got yourself a sci-fi weapon and I think it's just because aesthetically it kind of gives that look because it's based off of which a very bizarre firearm the P90 which is I mean it's not a super new weapon but it definitely looks odd it looks different and the same goes with uh, bullpup designs So bullpup rifles are oftentimes, I mean, you see them all over the place as far as like this kind of design. What a bullpup means is the action is behind the trigger. So the trigger's up here, the action is back here. Uh, here, like here's the st Steyr Aug, you know, trigger's up here and the action's back here. And the purpose of a bullpup is to have a full-size rifle barrel length 
but because the action is behind the trigger, you actually have an overall shorter rifle, which means that, for, for instance, in uh, room clearing and things like that, you have more uh, space. You, you, you can more easily manip manipulate and maneuver the weapon through tighter spaces. So that's the whole purpose of that. But um, I see that a lot in, I mean, like here, like this is a bullpup. Um, bullpup. This, let's see here. This look, no, that's not a bullpup. This one looks like it's a bullpup. Like all these designs, it's like if you want to make it futuristic, add a thumb hole and a, make it a bullpup. And it's all of a sudden like some futuristic looking weapon. And I get that, like, it looks cool. It looks, it looks, the reason why is because it looks different than the average firearm that we generally see in modern uh, militaries and police forces. I don't particularly like bullpups. Uh, I think they're, I don't like reloading them. They're not that great. I mean, it all depends on what you practice with, but for that purpose, I, I, they're almost, ho they're horrible in almost every way, in my opinion. Um, the benefits of them is that most bullpups have an ambidextrous ability to them so that the armor whoever is like fitting out troops or whatever can make them ambidextrous so they can be more easily convertible to left or right-handed shooters. But I don't know, the cons to me outweigh the pros of having a shorter barrel and having an ambidextrous. I'm left-handed, but I shoot right-handed, so it's never really been a problem for me. But uh, moving on. Um... So yeah, this one's a bullpup, and what bothers me about some of these designs here is, let's look again at the AR-15 here. So this this particular design here, the Nagari rifle, assault rifle, uh, is very much playing off of the more typical rifle pattern. But I don't like where this magazine is going because of how big are these bullets? Where's where's the action at? If you look at the AR here, it's loading it right up in front of the barrel where the, it's going to get chambered. The, if you look at the angle of, of this design here, these bullets are going like right into the trigger guard. Like how how does this function? I mean, there could be some mechanism inside that like lifts the, bolt, the, the bullet up and rotates it. But I mean, that just seems to me from a design perspective and from a practical perspective to uh, be kind of counterproductive, kind of unnecessary um, this one's relatively fine I think my only gripe with this one is the stock probably needs to be a little longer because this is a sniper rifle and you're gonna want to have a nice shoulder in it. I like that it has a, a cheek uh, cheek pad here so you can rest your cheek on it although it doesn't have um, a scope and it doesn't even have iron sights um, and that's another thing here is like I'm assuming this is probably like a red dot on this on this gun here this one has irons of some sort this one doesn't have any sights so I don't know how you aim with this and this one has iron sights and a rail so you although the rails kind of in a weird spot I think if you're going to attach an optic to a pistol you don't want it here you're gonna want it back here that's where generally you attach optics on pistols I'm not saying you can't do it here but generally the way it's done if you look at uh, pistols with red dots or optics of some sort on them they're they're generally at least if it's a modern polymer frame striker fired pistol that's going to be right there um, but I think this grip is too small again thumb hole <laughs> and there's just not enough grip I feel like on this rifle to make it fit the hand well that's one thing you want to think about is like someone has to hold this firearm so how are the ergonomics and how is it going to fit in your hand? And uh, yeah, I think I just think that's something to consider. Let's look at some more here. So these are some more guns from Traveler. And they're okay. There's just some of these. Like this here is not a good grip. Where's the... I can't get my thumb wrapped around this here. What's in the, And this grip is so teeny tiny. Um, this grip is okay. It's just from a preference standpoint. I think a more vertical grip like this... I don't particularly 
I like a little more angle to it, I guess. Um, maybe like this, this guy here. And I understand, like, I can't really critique on this one. I don't know what this one shoots. And it's obviously something that's so far future or alien that, like, it's outside the realms of what we're talking about right now. And I should clarify at this point in the in the video that I'm talking about guns that seem to shoot bullets. They're using smokeless powder of some sort to repel a projectile out of the gun and using the gases in the that are made from that uh, explosion to cycle the gun. Which is something again here, like this this guy has a very similar problem to the other gun where it's just loading bullets like into nothing, into the trigger. Like how does this work? Uh, no sights on it again. Actually none of these guns really have any sights. So how are you, you need sights. You need at least irons or optics on these things. Otherwise you can't shoot. Unless these things are like the halo guns which also don't have sights and sometimes not even optics but they connect up to the the soldier's helmet and create like a crosshair or something that's kind of what i think they're implying with those uh gun designs which i don't particularly like because i think from a military standpoint if your helmet goes out how do you aim your gun now you need to have a way to aim your firearm you need you need backup sights at least then just for the if it hits the fan scenario these are all things to consider as you're designing your firearm. So this this one's a little bizarre because the shouldering of the stock, for, first of all, looks uncomfortable. I don't know what this is, if this is the magazine, where things go, because this looks open right here, or is this the magazine? It, this doesn't seem to shoot probably typical guns, typical firearms, but... Uh, typical bullets, but it it's uh it's bizarre. It's interesting. This grip is really long. It doesn't need to be that long. The angle could work for that. It's more of like a traditional rifle grip. Um, this one, I think the grip is a little too small. The revolver is fine. Nice little J frame J, J frame revolver. And this gun, mm, I mean, it doesn't look like it shoots a bullet. It's something. Again, outside the realm of what we're talking about right now. Um, I'm wondering if this one's a shotgun because of this here. This looks like a shotgun tube area. And that, that's a, one other thing I'd like to talk about too is um, oftentimes I feel like there's a lot of eclectic ideas. Like you combine aspects of a shotgun with like a bolt action rifle and. Uh, it doesn't make any sense. I remember, for instance, and I just I had to design it because it's what the client wanted. I was designing a, a gun design for a, a game, and they wanted a pump action shotgun with a three round. They called it a clip, but you don't don't call them clips. They're magazines. Um, with a three round magazine, and I was like, I tried to steer them away from it, and I was like, you know. <laughs> Uh, double-barreled shotguns that have been around for hundreds of years have this this futuristic weapon is it was a futuristic shotgun it only has one more round than a double-barreled shotgun and then also like a, a pump-action shotgun the whole point of a pump-action shotgun is that well let's look at a Remington 870 All right, let's look at this guy here. All right, so this is the kind of shotgun that I own, uh, Remington 870. The whole point of the pump action shotgun is actually that you load in from the bottom here with the shotgun shells, and this tube, this is the magazine. It's not removable. You can't take the tube off and put a new tube on like you can with a AR-15 magazine where you can remove a magazine and put a new one in. The grip here is what's used to cycle the gun because it doesn't use gases like most semi-automatics do. You have to manually cycle the gun. 
and so you're using the pumping action to cycle a, to extract an old round and cycle a new round into the chamber and generally these tubes limit the amount of ammo that it can hold so for instance this looks like it has an extended tube so this can probably hold much more than the off-the-shelf version of a Remington 870 which um, shoots well mine is still I haven't done anything to upgrade mine because I just keep mine for fun um, but it, it holds four in the tube and one in the chamber so five shots so already my pump action uh, with that doesn't have a removable magazine can fire two more shots than this futuristic rifle uh, shotgun I was pump shotgun I was supposed to design and they were really stuck on this three round thing so so essentially three in the in the magazine one in the chamber so I had to go with it but it is what it is and I guess I mean that that oftentimes is what happens like you feel like you're right and you feel like what you're saying makes sense but it's not what the client wants the client wants something that's wrong and not right but it's what they want and they're paying you so shut up and do it because if you can't convince them you're just gonna annoy them and I didn't want to annoy the client with my attempt at being this uh, gun expert which I'm not um, so I, I, I went ahead and designed it it hurt it really hurt as I designed it but I went ahead and designed it and I attribute it to the it was for a company that was in the UK so in the UK it's much harder to have firearms so the people are just less exposed to it and so they don't understand in a lot of these countries and places how a firearm works and because they've only seen them in movies and in games and those are like the worst places to get your firearms <laughs> knowledge from so I guess at the end of the day I'm gonna wrap up this video here and I think I'll do a follow-up video next week of uh, designing how would, I, how would I go about designing a firearm in Clip Studio? But I wanted to have this one as sort of a, an introduction to the concept because I just think that if we take the time to think about uh, how we're designing things like firearms and we take into consideration some things real firearms designers take to mind or keep in mind and how real firearms work, and this is again in the context of designing firearms for games or RPGs, publication, whatever, illustrations, where they are use they're firing bullets they're using gunpowder smokeless powder firing bullets if it's a laser gun if it's a plasma rifle like as long as you can make the look of the science work it's probably going to pass the test of like yeah that makes sense but we know how guns work we have real guns in the world right now and so there we know how, most people have seen them they exist like they they're real they're not like plasma or laser guns where it's kind of theoretical or we're just in the beginnings of figuring out that technology so we don't really know how it works we know how guns work we know how how ballistics work so i think just taking a cursory glance at how firearms work can help you uh, make better firearms designs so anyways i'm going to end the video here and again, I think I'm going to do another video, a follow-up one. Maybe we'll design um, an assault weapon, a quote-unquote assault weapon, uh, a, a rifle of some sort, semi-automatic or fully automatic uh, combat rifle. And I'm probably going to make mistakes while I make it because, again, I'm not 100% a gun expert. This is just from my knowledge over the years of owning firearms and being interested in them of what I've learned. But... Uh, I'm going to make a new video, I think, after this one of roughly how to design these things or how I would go about it. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe if you're interested in this kind of stuff and you want to see more uh, work for this kind of stuff. I think, again, my goal is to just be a better artist and understand these sorts of things uh, in a lot in a better way. And uh, yeah, if you want to support the channel, you can find the link in the video description for subscribe star it's only two dollars a month you get access again to a, a discord server where we can chat and talk about art critique each other's work and really form what my hope is is a positive art community so anyways i'll catch you guys in the next video i hope you guys have a good day